Hello guys! I just want to use this time to welcome you back to my channel. I know I was gone for a very long time but I really miss you guys so much. But I really hope to bond with you guys again, and help as best as possible to aid in your consistent improvement. This is Class with Mr. Myers, and I hope you enjoy this video. Food, is super important. All living organisms, require food to survive. But, can you guess how do they get that food? Well, that's what this video is about. Many kinds of relationship exist between living organisms. And no, not the in love kinds of relationships. However, these relationships may be beneficial or harmful to the organism. To find out how living organisms obtain food, you will be learning about something called, the food chain. Can you say that with me? The food chain. A food chain is just a simple linear sequence of organisms. That shows how, energy and nutrients are passed from one organism to the next. The ultimate source of energy in any food chain, is the sun. As green plants, which are also known as producers, use the process of photosynthesis, and a source of light energy to make their own food. In addition, producers, makes up the first part of the food chain. We are surrounded by producers, because, every plant in the world is a producer. The next part of the food chain, is the consumers. Now, there are different types of consumers, nevertheless, they all depend on a producer to obtain food. As shown in the simple linear sequence here, there is the primary producer, then, the primary consumer, followed by the secondary, then a tertiary consumer. These organisms are arranged in levels in the chain, referred to as trophic levels. Consumers can also be classified according to what they consume. For example, Herbivores, like cows and slugs consume plants. Carnivores, like lizards and eagles consume animals. And, omnivores like humans and bears consume both plants and animals. Feeding is just the fundamental characteristic, that keeps us from dying, no matter the type of food we consume. As we stated, earlier there exists many kinds of relationships, in an ecosystem. The first one we will be looking at is the predator prey, which you will find very harmful to one of the organism involved. There are several characteristics that predators must have in order to successfully capture its prey. These may include being able to move quickly, moving with stealth and being able to camouflage itself well. The predator prey relationship is very important within the ecosystem, as it serves as a biological control to keep the number of organisms in the system constant. Likewise, the preys may involve characteristics to avoid being eaten. For example, being very quick and having highly developed senses with rapid responses. The number of organisms in an environment may be determined, as a result of different factors. For example, food supply, the number of predators present, and, also how often reproduction takes place. Detritivores, and decomposers are the final part of the food chain. They are essential for recycling of chemical elements, within all ecosystems. Detritivores are organisms that eat non-living plants, and animal remains. For example, scavengers and vultures eat dead animals. They feed on pieces of decomposing organic matter, breaking them down into smaller fragments. Decomposers are microorganisms, that feeds on dead and waste organic matter, causing them to break down. Decomposers helps to recycle compounds, from dead matter. Without them the nutrient would be lost in the ecosystem. In an ecosystem, you may find decomposers such as fungi and bacteria. 
We will now be looking at symbiotic relationships. A symbiotic relationship is any close relationship between two organisms of different species. There are three types of symbiotic relationships that we are concerned with. They are, parasitism, commensalism, and mutualism. In parasitism, one, organism, which is the parasite lives on or inside another organism, known as the host, causing it some harm. For example, a tapeworm living in a human's intestine gains digested food, shelter and protection in the intestine. The infected person may suffer from loss of appetite, and loss of weight. The second symbiotic relationship that we have, is the commensalism. In commensalism, one organism which is the commensal, gains benefit while the other organism the other gains nor is harmed. An example may be viewed as it relates to cattles and egrets. The egrets perch on the back of cows. They gain food by eating ticks from the cow's skin, and insects that the cow disturbs as it moves through the grass. The final symbiotic relationship is the mutualism. And as the word mutual suggests, both organisms gain benefit, and in many cases they cannot survive without each other. For example, bees and flowers. Bees collect nectar to make honey by traveling from flower to flower. They also carry pollen from one plant to another, resulting in pollination. Hence, both bees and flowers are mutually benefited. In review of always stated, this image summarizes what symbiosis is all about. If you watched this video to the end, that's so cool. Real quick, as we wrap this up, if you have not subscribed to the channel, if you wouldn't mind taking a moment to do that. I have so many learning videos and I want you to be in loop with new uploads. So click subscribe if that sounds like a blast. I hope you had a fun time, thank you for watching.